Hi friends, I am Marie Spalding with Living Felt and you have arrived at our Doll Felt Along Part 4. Today we are finishing our hands and putting clothes on our dolls with needle felting. Next time we'll be wet felting. So join in the fun. I can't wait to see the dolls that you're making. Hey everybody, thank you for being here. I am Marie Spalding with Living Felt. Today we are back in my home studio for part four of the doll felt along. Thank you all so much for joining me. I see a lot of our usual suspects already on the feed. I am so glad to have you here with me and it has been so much fun watching your dolls evolve over the last few weeks. Today we are felting our clothing and we're going to needle felt clothing um, and we'll just touch briefly on what we'll do next week which is wet felting clothing. So I hope it's fun and if you've just popped into this feed and you don't know what felting is, watch for a little while or click on some of our friends pages even and see the amazing work that they do. I know that there are a few people who plan to watch all of the videos and then felt our doll, their doll, but I know there's a ton of you that have already started and it has just been wonderful to see your dolls. This is one of my dolls, Jax. Um, most of his clothes are wet felted, but I wanted to bring him up today to get us started because even if you want to wet felt your clothes, you might find that you wet felt pieces and then needle felt them and piece them onto your doll. Some cases you hand stitch them and some cases you just put them right on. So today we are going to be looking at needle felting clothing. Uh, we're going to make some shoes. We're actually going to finish uh, one hand. So for those of you who saw the hand video, that video doesn't have a number. So this one is part four and I just inserted hands in because we never finished those. Um, so there's lots of options for clothes and you might like to needle felt some and wet felt some of your doll's clothes, which I love to do also. So um, Ona is an example. Her clothes are part wet felted and part needle felted, like her little top is uh, needle felted and some of the wet felt that is on her is actually wrapped. So there's lots of options for how you clothe your dolls and you'll find a lot of flexibility if you're willing to adventure into the world of wet felting. You can do a lot of really fun things like make a fun pack. Quickly, I brought this doll out a few times. This is my little uh, pixie witch and she is another example of a combination between uh, wet felt and needle felt clothing. Her hat is wet felted. Her little green top right here is needle felted and you know her arms are needle felted as is her little jacket but her skirt is wet felted and then actually needle felted into place so there's lots of options if you have questions today um, based on one of my dolls or a doll that you're working on please do post it i'll do my best to address all the questions i can see as they come across the feed and if i miss it and it's important for you to move on please make sure to tag me uh, during the week or you can private message me uh, or you can call the shop even and we'll see if we can answer your questions. What we're gonna do is turn down the camera. I'll show you what we have prepared for today and we'll get started. So thank you everyone so much for being here. Cool. Okay, so this is my desktop, and I'm going to watch for some of your comments to come through. Oh, I see that we have Joan in Ireland. We have Joanne in Pennsylvania. We have Deborah in North Carolina. Kelly is here. Uh, Paula is here from Mexico. Stephanie is here. Joanne is here. It's so wonderful for you all to be here. Thank you so much. On the desktop, I have just a couple of simple dollies that I'm going to just point out a few things to think about. For those of you who aren't familiar with our stuff, we are working in all of our top layers of all of our dolls, we're working with MC1 batting, uh, and this is a Living Felt brand fiber. It's made right here in the USA and comes in about uh, close to 90 colors now. And this is the material that you're seeing on the surface of the dolls. We make it like this because it needle felts really flat and smooth, um, but you can also wet felt with it too, so that's kind of fun. And 
let me just pull some things up here. So as y'all join in, just say hi and where you're from. I am watching for some of your comments. Uh, Shenanigans wants to know where the cat dolls are. Connie, we're hunting for the cats. They have gone out. <laughs> Somebody let the cats out. Lois uh, says she watched a few episodes on her TV on YouTube. That is awesome. And this one will be on YouTube as well as soon as we can get it up. Uh, Benita, thank you for being here. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you all. So what we're gonna look at today is needle felting clothing, which is a really easy thing to do, and it's super fun, and you can play with, you know, whether you want the clothes to closely fit your doll, um, you know, like this, or whether you want them to have some real layering and looseness to them. The more layered they are, the better felted they have to be before you put them on the doll. But we're gonna look at some fun things you can do just to add dimension to the clothing and make them look a little better than pure flat. And I'm gonna watch for your questions to pop up. Greta says she needs to make pants, boots, and a skirt, and we're gonna look at shoes. So these are just a couple of simple dolls. Um, one thing with needle felting clothing is it's really easy you know, to vary the colors, even to add a little bit of texture. And we're gonna look at how you add these real simple little elements that make it look like the clothing is actually on the doll. Um, as opposed to needle felted to it. Like my skinny little elf here looks like he's actually wearing a shirt. And that's a real fun thing to do, to add this little bit of dimension. And it's oh so super, super easy. <laughs> Hi, Anne from Denmark. That is awesome. We have friends from all over the world and I am really honored that you're taking time out of your day to spend it here with us and meet some of my BFFs who um, felt with us all the time. Cool, so let's jump over here to this guy, which we started um, together. Uh, I've been working on his pants, but the first thing we wanna do is look at his arm here. And I left you all off on the hand video with just attaching the hand to the body. So I thought what I should do is just show, especially for those who are beginner beginners, um, beginner beginners how to bridge this gap here and what to do. Is that good? If everyone's queued up and you're ready and ready to play and have fun, let me just see a round of hearts because then I always know you're watching and with me. Okay, so this is our pale peach batting. I'm just gonna pull off a little bit and I like to work in real thin strips and um, narrow strips. We're just gonna connect this hand. Oh, nice to see you all. Now I see your hearts. See, you're on about a 25 second delay and um, it helps me not feel like I'm all by myself when I see something once and around. So Barb wants to know if I'm gonna show how to make toes. Um, you know, let me see if we can squeeze in time for that and I'll show, you, I'll show you some toes. Oh, I saw some sad faces. Maybe those were errors. I hope so. I hope we don't have any sad faces. Um, Okay, so here's this little strip of batting, and I'm just gonna go ahead and peel it a little bit thinner because I wanna really control this here. Notice that what I do is I take this hand fiber and I sort of floof it out. What I want is to wrap this wool around the arm and lay this over the top rather than wrap this around the top. I feel like it kind of helps me hide the join a little bit better. And this hand is on there really strong, just pretty much like I showed you in the hand video, except this one, the thumb is in the right place. <laughs> yeah, okay, so some people are making bare toes. Okay, I wanna see if we, if we can look at that together. So notice I fluffed this out, and now I'm just going to wrap this around. There's a lot of tape under there, um, but we're just going to work our way around it. So I am wrapping this around without getting any twist in it and I'll just go ahead and take it all the way up. I don't want that wrist too bulky, but I'm gonna be adding clothing on top of this right here. So I like to um, not make the skin tone too, too thick if I want it not to poke back through whatever is the outer layer. And for those of you who are joining the first time, um, Facebook downgrades the video. Uh, Facebook has had some issues today, but our video really should be better um, on YouTube. We've been working with our cameras a lot 
and um, trying to sync everything up here and just get the best picture we can um, with this technology that we're using right now. So you can always watch back on YouTube um, and hopefully those will be better. I know some are a little less than perfect, but each time we're doing a live broadcast, we're working on the camera um, set up to try and improve it for you. So notice that I'm just going at shallow, shallow, shallow angles and just needle felting all this fiber down initially so that it doesn't flail off. And you'll work on all sides, you know, all sides of the arm there. It doesn't really help, it, you know, if you try and go straight in, your needle's gonna hit. So always try and go with this, you know, real shallow angle. Now where the hand is, I'm gonna bring this hand fiber up and just blend it right on there. This is kind of the benefit also of not having the head on there. The head's so delicate, and one of the things about that is you don't want to mar your head a bunch. I have um, put my head in a bag, <laughs> like a sandwich baggie, if I have it on, and I'm still trying to do other things that might mess it up. And um, you could do the same thing with your hands, is you could put those in a baggie if you have them on a little bit early. So let me, I'm just going to keep needle felting this hand for a minute and get all this laying down. And while I do that, let me queue up and see if y'all have any questions or comments that I should see. If you have a question on the, the hands so far or what you've done on the body so far that we haven't addressed, please let me know so I can help you today. Okay, so Benita says she's been making rock trolls. I'm gonna to jump to a little more coarse needle. She's been making rock trolls and she wants to make one a jacket um, from one of the silk hankies. And the only thing I would say is, yeah, with silk hankies, just, just felt them to wool, you know, definitely felt them to wool because uh, by themselves, they're not enough. Okay. All I really want is for all of this to lay down. If I were putting a bunch of skin tone, then I would keep wrapping the skin tone. I want this to lay down so that I can put my shirt back over the top because that's what I'm gonna do. How many of you have already uh, begun making your fingers or made your hands? Let me see. Let me see a round of hearts or tell me, you know, just type fingers or hands done or hands started. Let me see where you are with that. Notice these shallow, 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 shallow angles. Someone says, I used Paverpol. Is it possible to use fabric stiffener instead? You know, my answer to that is just test it and, and see how you like it. Because this is, you know, this is all you have to risk is one finger. Just risk one finger and see how you like it. Now mine feels stiff. It's definitely stiff and that's what I want. I want it to be stiff so that as I do this, it doesn't come undone. As I mentioned, not only do my dolls get handled in the shop, but little kids will come and just tweak their hand, <laughs> their fingers out just because they can, I suppose. Um, you know, kids like to play with stuff. So um, it is a little stiff and I would say just test it, but I would still start with probably a 50-50 and see how you like it. Okay. Someone says, hands done, fingers started, but haven't finished the hand, fingers done, hands started. Uh, Aggie says, I found out why you suggest making more than one head. The initial doll turned out to be a boy <laughs> instead of a girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, anyway, it's fun. It's fun to just kind of see where it goes, for sure. And you have a couple more and you have that part you have your inspiration started when you have the head made. Okay, refining is something you can always do over time, but once you have you know that in place, um, then you can kind of see where you want your sleeve to go. So we're gonna look at the clothing together. And um, I did start pants for this guy. Um, and so, but why don't we start with a shoe? Since I have a shoe started already here on this guy, I wanna show you a couple of shoe ideas in case you want your doll to stand. And um, the one thing I'd like to point out, especially to those who are new to working with me, 
Rather than teach you how to make a specific doll or a specific character, I really like to teach fundamentals so that you can try them, deviate from them, innovate with them, build off from there. So I'm always just trying to give you ideas and things to think about. So most of my dolls sit rather than stand, but sometimes you want your doll to stand and it helps to give them a really good platform. So uh, we made big figure eight feet for our dolls. And on this guy, I'm building 100% wool shoes. I'm going to show you how to do this, um, but I want to jump to a slipper first to give you all an idea of something you can make for your dolls if you want to get them standing and keep them standing. So this is a little slipper that I made for one of my dolls, and it is got cardboard in there. So you can make, if your doll's just not standing or your feet are too little, you can make little platforms for them to stand on. You don't have to glue this in, but you could. And what I do is I'll like basically, you know, needle felt the wool, I'll put my wool down just like this. Use your punch tool and needle felt the area. then you can put your cardboard in there and make sure you use that to help outline the area. That helps you know how big it needs to be. Now this piece does not have any cardboard in it. So what you can do is just start to shape this the size you need it and create this. What I do then is you can join these two. You just wanna make sure you have like a right and a left shoe you can join these two by putting this fiber over the top. And you can just needle felt it all the way down and around until you have that base. You can t tear off the edges until you have that base secured in cardboard. And then you'll make the top. And the top is gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna needle felt that little band and then fold the edges in and needle felt it over the top. And what that allows you to do is slip your big doll feet, like if you just wrap them in white wool, slip your big doll feet right into the shoe, and that's going to help your doll stand. If she had both of them on, you would see. Let me give her a little lift here. If you have both of them on, um, that's going to help her stand up. Move her back so y'all can see. So if you just are having a difficult time, think about making independent shoes for your doll that you can just slip on to the feet. And you can even make them this way and then build backs and finish out the shoe. So it's just an idea as a helper for support. If you want your doll to stand, you might make big shoes. Okay, I don't see anything popping up on that. Let's look at um, this doll's shoes, which don't have any cardboard at all. And I encourage you to like make a sole, and then I'm gonna show you how to finish it. So here's here are the soles that we're making, and I'm gonna show you how I make that. As soon as I find my wool back. Pop up any questions while you guys, uh, you know, on the little in-betweensies. Pop up your questions and let me know what I can answer for you. Okay. So to make a sole like this, you know, if you if you wanna make yourself little cardboard guides like on the little slipper I just showed you, that can be really, uh, really helpful. And it might be something that you just keep in a bin so that you can refer back to. To make a sole like this, the sole's just gonna give this foot a little more of a platform to stand on, and you can make it really, really flat with needle felting. So I just kind of, um, this, this is more the width I want. Just gonna kind of fold the, width, the wool over two, three, four times so that you have a nice thickness. Just do it the same for each, unless, you know, if your doll is a little more long-legged on one leg, you can make one of the platforms a little bit uh, shorter, one a little bit taller, and help even your doll out. It's so easy to make these little, these little soles. I'm just gonna get that wool tack down. So just go flat down first. Remember to, you know, you're not trying to attach your pieces to your foam. 
you're just trying to bounce off the foam as a surface. So get this a little bit flat. Don't let it get too much bigger than the other one. And then what I do is I put this one on top sometimes to help me start shaping and make sure the two match. You can do this process that I'm doing right here with paper, with cardboard, with whatever, you, to match two things up and let them be the same size. If it doesn't work for you to have it on top, you could put it on bottom. Whatever works so that you can kind of guide it around. So what I want to encourage you to do when you're making these platforms is flatten it first and then start to shape it, sculpt it in before you go too far because part of that shaping in of the sides is the density of the piece and it's, it's important. You don't want those to splay out too thin and be something that you can't wrangle in and help you create a nice shelf. Orthopedic woolen shoe, someone says. Uh, good, so some people have some shoe styles. Yeah, so like with this little platform, where I'm gonna make a pair of slippers over here for my guy, but you can take this little platform and make it a pair of sandals or cross sandals, or I wanna see a heart if anybody remembers flow hose. Anyone who's as old as me <laughs> knows what a flow hose is. If you remember flow hose, I wanna see a heart. Uh, so you can make uh, sandals or whatever. So just keep sculpting that until you have a nice little platform. Now before we put the platform on our doll, what we want to do is cover this wire. The reason, um, oh I see some hearts, y'all remember flow hose? <laughs> That's funny. The reason I don't put core wool down here is because you know when we get to these little narrow areas it's so easy to poke your needle all the way through and um, that means it's real easy to poke whatever's on the inside out and I would rather it all be the same color oh sure car someone says use cardboard from cereal boxes oh yeah that's a great idea okay so what we're gonna do to cover this foot and you know if you don't like my method just kinda follow follow your own guidance, whatever that is. Um, but what I do is just kind of start maybe with the wool on the top of the foot and gonna go around, if you go around at least once or so, so I'm gonna shorten this, go around at least once or so, then you can kind of um, anchor it down. Everything, um, I tell you, sometimes it looks a little more tricksy uh, when we're doing it together than it is. It's kind of easier sometimes in your lap to work but notice I've just gone around once now I'm gonna go around twice so now I have this anchored down pretty well and then I'm gonna sneak around the ankle here sneak up around over what's sort of the heel area and then back I'm gonna go back over the foot so you kind of want to do a little figure eight here and that helps you build this area up and make sure you go over the end of your toe. Um, think of that little Q-tip swab we did on the fingers, and you can just fold it up or down. If you fold it up, then you control a little more of the bulk on the bottom. So just start on your foot by giving your doll a sock. I decided that this was going to be, I think, Santa in the off season, and I really almost left him in his bare black socks. <laughs> it looks so cute as socks. So make your socks uh, complement, if they're gonna show, you make the bottom part complement your shoe color so that when you needle felt all the way through and you're flattening the bottoms, you know, you're gonna be flattening the bottoms, that the wool that pokes through is the same color as your shoe because you can always add a different color sock on top right here. So that's all you gotta do to start covering the foot. Just think of your shoe color. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I, you know, how we build up, how we build up this portion and put the sole on and then we're gonna flesh out all the details on this shoe. <laughs> Thought you might need heels not sure if high heels would work maybe you could build the high heels like wet felt them over a toothpick or a little stubby piece of wood or something like that 
so that they actually or make maybe make these like make little platforms and then attach that to the doll that might work So we're just kind of get this all laying down. I don't want it to be rock, rock hard because I have plenty of stuff to attach on top. And just remember, you're always trying to, to preserve the um, felt ability of your piece when you add the next ones on. So here's my little guy, I'm whacking his legs out. Don't worry if he doesn't stand right away. You can add little bits of wool on top and I've been bending him all over the place in the last few days. But you do want him, um, you can take up any distance in the bending of the hips right here if he doesn't quite stand up straight. Um, but just kind of make sure that that is in the right place. And you can initially drive it onto your foot but sometimes it's a little bit easier to attach the top down first. So I know I'm trying to get my neck out of the camera for you. Notice I'm just going through the top of the foot down into what's kind of the sole. And then we'll go backwards as well. So I'm going to try and get in a little better place for you all. I'll bend his leg back. Instead of wrapping it with wool, can you sandwich the foot in pre-felt? You know, Kate, uh, it's a great question, and I do want to talk about pre-felt today, but here's the thing about, about pre-felt, is pre-felt, for the most part, is very delicate and very thin. So you could use pre-felt, but um, it's just going to be paper thin, and it still needs to be felted. When you put pre-felt on your doll, um, it, it, you need enough on there to actually felt it in place. So definitely play with pre-felt if you want. And I'm gonna show you a, uh, you know, a pre-felt made today from MC1. We're gonna look at that as we put on clothes. But pre-felt, at least the pre-felt that we sell is very delicate. And I am looking at um, another that is still very fine, but a little more felted that we might work with in the future. Okay, so notice that my sole is, you know, is sticking on there, but you know, it could be peeled off. It's um, not making a snowshoe, um, although that would be fun for Santa. Um, and so what we're going to do is put the put the top on, and this is really fun because you can just build up bulk right over the wire. Okay, how's everybody doing? Is my tabletop felt as well? This is our foam, Jackie. This is our Earth Harmony foam. We showed that on Wooly Wednesday uh, yesterday. <laughs> Chuck Taylor's right on. The doll that was made for me is wearing Chuck's. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. This is our um, vintage, I think this one's vintage. Or pecan since pecan so I'm doing Santa in his like house slippers and this one is not finished so I'm going to show you that um, but what we want to do then is put a mound of wool on top here that we can anchor down into the sole and you can just pile it I kind of like to wrap it this way first sort of like this and get it going back so notice that what I did is I took a piece and I folded it and I want this nice round toe thing happening here and that's how I'm going to build up the bulk to match the slippers so I'm going to do this lightly and then we're going to move over here and add all the detail so we don't spend too much time on shoes and again this is just one idea one idea for you guys to consider gals guys gals okay so tear it off so that you don't have more than you need and I am going to start um, like right in here, right in this little join here. This is where I'm gonna attach it first. If you want, you could also, if you want, or if you're doing something a little bit different, you could also start with a little strip, like a little joining strip right here and bring that all the way around and then put the other wool on top. So why don't I do that just so you can see what I mean. This would be like just a little layer to actually join the top and the bottom. And so I can needle felt this in here and needle felt this up. 
What I don't want is that this color to come through the bottom. But you can needle felt this up to that and join them together. <laughs> Sharon says, I love your watch. Thank you, Sharon. I love my watch too. It's a man's watch. <laughs> I like big, chunky watches. Okay. So see, this is so, so easy. And we're going in stages and you don't have to even have it all figured out before you get started. You really don't. Just guide this wool around, needle felt it in, and get it all connected. Then you can come back and put the top on, like I was doing. I folded it around just to make it nice and rounded there, and then anchor it all down right there. So Paula says, what about the soya mat? So um, Paula, this mat um, does have soy in it, but I know you're talking about the white one and the, our white soy mat um, has a lot of really environmentally friendly uh, properties. Thank you for asking about that. It's micro thin, it's like a quarter inch thin. And so when we brought that online, it's really, uh, it, it works good for like 3D things um, and less for 2D things. Some people like it and some people don't. <laughs> so I always share it um, and say, you know, you might give it a try but not everybody loves it. Okay, how would you add toes? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna look at toes in a second, but I wouldn't have any toes poking out of these slippers. <laughs> so I won't do that part just yet. All right, so this is the basic idea of how to build maybe a shoe or a boot, or, um, a pair of slippers. I think I'm gonna show you something here in a second when we put suspenders on my guy how you might think about making uh, sandals with, with straps. So just keep working on your shoe and needle felt all these fibers nice and smooth. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to the my left shoe that I already have in the works and show you how you might add some features that make it look a little more shoe-esque. So let me, I'm just gonna peel some of this off and tack it down real fast. Connie, you can't change what? Oh, you love the gray foam. Yeah, I, I do too. I like the foam. Okay, I'm just gonna tack these fibers down for the moment. I'll finish my shoe later. This shoe later, when y'all aren't with me. Okay, now some of y'all already know how to do this. Um, some of y'all are already experienced in this and some people are brand brand new everyone's at a different phase and some people are gonna have tips that I probably um, don't even haven't even shared today but here is okay so here's my shoe this one is started and noticed uh, you know I've kind of kind of wrapped it up to the heel here and I just basically went around the the back I want this to look like a house slipper like maybe the ones that you wear indoor or outdoor so what I've made here are a few little pieces. And if you've watched any videos with me, you've seen that I like to create edges. And this is something that we're gonna do a lot today is create a folded edge. I'm looking for my skewers. Last time y'all were with me, I cut my skewer. <laughs> here's one. So here's a, here's a cut piece. Play with, you know, play with different shapes and different sizes to see how these things work for you and to achieve what you want. And to do things like this, all we're doing is we're taking a piece of fiber, and I'm going to show you what it's for in just a second, but we're just taking a piece of fiber and folding it over. It could be a toothpick, it could be a skewer, something like that. And just fold it over a straight edge, basically, and start to tack it down. Then you can take that 
whatever guide out and continue tacking that edge down. So let's just call this a folded edge. We're going to be making a lot of folded edges to make our clothes uh, have a little more life and a little more dimension. And this is all I've done on these pieces. This is how I make a folded edge. You don't need any fancy tools, anything bigger than, you know, a uh, shish kebab skewer, which you could get hundreds at the grocery store. And this is all I've done. Now you're gonna have to play with the sizes and if you're the kind that repeats projects a lot, you might start to make little templates for yourself. I always feel like I'm doing something new, something different, so I'm often not repeating. But so now we've created these folded edges and I just wanted to show you how we did that. That's a nice folded edge. And then turn it back over and needle felt this side because this is gonna be the top. The other thing I made is a little rounded edge, and this is going to be the tongue of my slipper. So you just put a piece down, it, sometimes it's not even any more um, exact than this, and just kind of round it in, just fold it in and start tacking that down and shaping it. You can play with shapes and templates using paper. Uh, using felt, actual uh, felt that you cut into shapes. And I'm gonna show you some of those things next when it comes to clothing. So now, before you go too far, we're making a little tongue, just start to shape it in, shape it in, shape it in. And this is how we're gonna make a little tongue. So let's see why am I showing you these seemingly random things and how is this gonna bring our little slipper to life? I poked myself. I was watching you guys' comments. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, here we go. Here's our little slipper shoe, very much in draft mode, but we can do a couple of things to make it look a little more realistic right away. And that's what I made these little folded edges for. So this one is gonna come around the back of the shoe just like this. And that's gonna look give us some little dimension on the front, and then we can add our tongue right there. And it's gonna look like he actually has a little slipper on. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the tongue on first, and because I want these, uh, this little cuff around the back, to come on, uh, to come over the top of the tongue. So hopefully, hopefully this all this shows. Now this is a lot more extra than I probably need, so I'm just gonna, Pluck this off if you can. Pluck it off so that it's feathered. But it's all needle felted down, so it doesn't all wanna come off. So I'm gonna pluck that right on there. And remember to use your fine needles at this point so that you don't leave a lot of holes. The wool under there is fairly firm, so that helps us needle felt in um, and actually minimizes needle marks because there's not a lot of air under there the wool just compresses right down. <laughs> a doll purse, someone says they're looking forward to the DVDs. <laughs> We're gonna have to look at how, how we need to edit that to, to look nice on a, on a DVD, sis. Thank you for that suggestion. Okay, so now we have a little tongue and it may not look like too much, but once we add this little cuff around the back, was I staying in camera? Y'all can see. Jennifer Field is here. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. I, I've been using the tool you showed us. <laughs> I share it with everybody. <laughs> okay, so put this little cuff around the back, and look, it really looks like a little slipper. So just start to needle felt that down. It's hard for me to see since I'm trying to um, stay within the camera but start to tack it down on the, just maybe the front edges, and then you can sculpt the rest of the back. Are there any questions? Does this look like something y'all can build off of to maybe make some different types of shoes? Does it give you some ideas? I'm, I'm interested to hear what you're thinking. 
you know, you could add little buttons, you could add clay buttons, you could add wool buttons, you could add a little decoration on now. Once you have the shoe built, you could put little Christmas trees on his, you know, slippers, whatever you like. Just have fun with it. Once you get the basic uh, part in place, then you can build up even more details. Laces would be cute. Um, Sharon says she's been using Jennifer's tool as well. <laughs> Jennifer's tool. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Let me get this leg out of the way. I'm gonna see if I can use it right now. Just crunch this down. I need to replace my my yellow needle here. I bent it. Okay, any questions? So, uh, Jalen says her mind is running 100 miles an hour. Um, Deborah says, what's Jennifer's tool? This is Jennifer's tool, the rubber banded 342 triangles. <laughs> That's Jennifer's tool. <laughs> that I learned from her a few years back and I've been using it honestly ever since. I do love it. Okay, so we have our little, we have our little boot on. It needs just a little refining and finishing but I think you get the idea and I would just go all around it and nerd out on all of the you know ins and outs but I think it looks like a little house slipper it just looks a little rough and uh, needs to be smoothed so I wanted to show you how to make the shoe platforms uh, to build over the top ways that you might add some little folded edges to add a little bit of realism and then if you want to add laces or something over the top you can um, and uh or you know little decoration on the shoes as well just clean them up and make some you know so they're they're both nice and even um and these were the the slippers and you can make slippers you know with with or without the cardboard but it just gives you a little platform for putting your dolly your dolly feet in maybe even if you just want them to be uh, like a temporary a temporary slipper okay any questions so far before we jump ahead and look at more clothing stuff? Thanks for being here, everybody. Someone says they use a gel pen shell to hold their needle. So that seems like a great idea. I've never tried that. Um, okay, so what I have here, these are just um, some quilt squares and some have been cut into shapes. These are um, just some felt pieces that have been cut into shapes. And this is a, a quilt square also. We're gonna look at these together as well when we get to wet felting clothing. But I want to put out a suggestion that when you're trying to fit your dolls, you're trying to understand how to build your clothes, you might you know, just risk cutting up something as inexpensive as a quilt square or maybe an old pillowcase or maybe some felt sheets. These are wool sheets that we have in the shop. And you can start to play with shapes and ideas for fitting clothes on your dolls. And maybe even um, have some things, you know, save these back as templates so that you can refer them, refer them, refer to them as you go forward. You might decide to make something like slightly larger, slightly smaller, but I want to just show you some ideas and I've shared this, uh, some of these ideas with uh, a few of you in the past. Um, let's see. This is just a fun little shape and it's a way uh, to kind of make a cape or something. Um, and oh, my dolly, I didn't even fin put him back together y'all from the last time we were together. What you can do with a shape like this whether you're wet felting or needle felting or you know doing a combination is you can put this on like a little jacket and then it folds down now this is a quilt square so you can see you know both sides of it but you can make a little piece of fabric whether it's needle felted or wet felted and kind of make a little jacket for somebody and even put a you know a little button on there so if you're willing to 
play with fabrics a little bit, you can have fun with that idea and test out clothing on your doll before you needle felt them on and that might start to enliven your thoughts and your ideas. A skirt might be something as simple, you know, as a as a great big circle, but I, you know, when you're needle felting, this might be a little too much uh, a little too much fiber, but you can play with these circles and play with these shapes to try them on your doll and see how, maybe even how big the piece is you need to needle felt. Try this on your doll um, and see how does that fit. Or just play with the idea of how you want to layer things on your doll. So quilt squares and felt squares can be really helpful as you're trying to decide how to clothe your dolls for wet felting and needle felting. Oh, Lori says she uses paper towel to pattern. Uh, Kate says she uses fat quarters. Um, and a wide ribbon. Oh, that sounds interesting. Those are those are great ideas. Oh, and Kate asked about a pre felt. So Kate, this is an example of a little pre felt skirt, and you can see over time just how it's kind of coming apart because pre felt itself is not felted. So when you put pre felt, just the needle felted pre felt in place, um, it's not going to hold up to any kind of handling at all. You can needle felt it on but it really needs to be either wet felted or needle felted to hold up over time. So definitely think about that. Does wool felt onto quilting fabrics? Not well, and I have tried it, Kate, uh, not well. Okay, so let's look at my guy that I started here. So this is uh, gonna be off season Santa. And I went ahead and started on his pants because I knew most of you could do that. Most of you could get there and know um, know how to put this on. For those of you who are um, brand brand new, we'll just look at that you know real quick. Uh, a couple of things that you might think about. Interfacing, yes, I've used interfacing too. And interfacing is just a little more stiff, I think, sometimes, and I can see a paper towel as well. That's nice. Okay, so when you're, you know, when you're clothing your doll, the one of the reasons I kept the, the leg skinny is as you decide how you want the clothes to hang, it gives you a lot of room to add fiber on top. So, you know, traditionally we wrap wool around it's easy sometimes if you wrap all around to start to see a stripe and that may not be really desirable. So you can um, actually put the wool on this way if you don't want to stripe it around uh, or if you just feel like you're not able to put it on without it striping around and that's what I did here. So it, uh, usually we just kind of jump to wrapping the fiber I don't know I guess as a matter of practice when we first get started but you don't have to you can put it on just like this and avoid the striping um, and needle felt it on just like that and you'll see with this MC1 batting that it's gonna lay down um, lay down real nice and smooth and I encourage you to take your time doing that so just for those who are new I just want to quickly point out a few things here when you're joining two parts this to this you always want your needle to go I'll start with the underside first this to see how this edge is a little more blunt can you see that has like a little more of a shelf you can just kind of spread that out a little bit when you're joining two parts, like up here, make sure that your needle goes this way, this way, this way. Don't go this way. Sometimes the habit is to go this way, and then what happens is you start to create a little shelf because you're actually banging into that part that you're trying to blend. So just like when we were doing the cheeks and other things like that, we wanna kind of thread the two parts together, and that's what I would suggest, is go in, 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 and be real um, methodical as you just kind of allow one to taper into the other. Now I'm not going to attach all of this. I'm going to jump over to that this other leg and just give you some ideas so that we can look at a variety of things with uh, putting clothes on our dolls. 
What color are you using? This uh, Jamlin is actually mahogany, but on your screen right now, it definitely looks like chimney. So mahogany is a little more of a deeper red and chimney is a little, uh, a little more towards the brick or orangey red. Mm -hmm. This one that I'm working with is mahogany. Just know that on your screen, it looks lighter than it does here where I am. So that's all I really wanted to suggest. One is that you don't have to join by wrapping around this way. And two, where you join parts, um, you know, with batting, it's fun because you can just put on a piece here and a piece there. But when uh, you're joining with the batting to make sure you take time and really uh, let those areas be a seamless join. Um, Right, needling, you've done that, needling the wrong direction. Yeah, I only know because I, I kind of see people do it sometimes in uh, workshops and it reminds me to, to, uh, to say, and probably I did it too, and that's why I know now not to. So I'm just gonna kind of tack this down. You don't really need all this, all this bulk on there, but I'm gonna tack it down so we can jump over to the other leg and I can give you some ideas on how you can make something look a little more like pants and a less like leggings. And leggings may be what you want. Sometimes leggings are fun or long johns or you know tights are really fun, but sometimes you want something to look a little more like a pant leg on your doll. So I just want to tack this down for the moment so that I don't lose it as I flip flop it around here working with you all. I just tack it down real fast. This is the kind of thing that I like to do when I'm not feeling um, maybe super inspired. And if I sit down in the evening and needle felt is just spend a whole bunch of time needle felting. Um, something like this that's kind of a big surface area so if you're struggling with making um, your pieces smooth um, and not hairy know that you know big areas big areas require a lot more patience and it's easy to kind of skip around and not spend the time to get all those needle marks out I know because when I started doing, uh, briefly I tried making polymer dolls. Has anyone done that? Making uh, polymer dolls? <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, <laughs> like my bet. Um, I noticed how easy it was to make a face or hands, but how difficult it was to get uh, like a body or an arm smooth. And then I realized over time that it's just patience I, I, I think I call it three things. So one is intention to not have the, the needle marks or the, you know, the bumpy marks. Um, the other one is the willingness to do it, meaning all the pokes required. And then the other is the dedication just to get it done, you know, actually doing the work. So it's easy to want it to be smooth, but you gotta be willing to spend the time and do all those little pokes and get all the wool laying down. Okay, so this pant is in, leg is in draft mode. Hi Roseanne, thank you for joining us. Uh, this pant leg is in draft mode and this one is kind of ready for, uh, you know, a pantalonis, if you will, a little uh, actual pant leg. And I have made one, I'm gonna share with you. I have made one just with needle felting, kind of like we made those little, um, pieces on our shoe. So using my punch tool, needle felting this down, you can just put, you know, lay down a, a big strip at first and then tear it away once you decide how big it needs to be. But use your fabric and your quilt squares to kind of piece if you need to, or just wrap the wool around and try and get an idea how big you need something to be. And when you're smoothing something like this, we're getting this all compressed, just remember that each time you take it off to peel it off the foam rather than rip it up. And notice that my edges are not really felted. You have to compress them to some degree, but you don't wanna felt them as hard as the rest of it. And then right here, of course, we have our folded edge, which we made together just a moment ago. This is MC1, she asked. Yes, this is our MC1 batting. Okay, 
So I have done this a few times. Don't be surprised, especially when you have real thin layers, if you have to go back and forth six or eight times with this back and forthness to get it all compressed and laying down how you want it. MC1 is really lofty, um, and, but it's going to work for you in ways that, uh, you know, like a Sliver or Coriadel won't, where you don't have to make that you don't have to make your own batting and you don't have to spiral it around. So we can make this look a little more like a true pant leg just by putting this around our doll. That little folded edge becomes the bottom of our pant leg. Now you may not want to cover up your cute boots. Um, you may want someone to look like they're wearing shorts and you may wonder why I put anything on underneath. And it just helps me piece it um, by making an underlayer. It really helps me piece it, piece it into place. So what I'm gonna do is put this on and we can start attaching it at the top here just like we did a moment ago when we put the underleg on. And I see that um, it looks like it's fuzzing out here on YouTube, but as I test, uh, as I look here at our in-house computer, it's looking really good. So just a reminder that the replay is going to look a lot better on YouTube. Um, okay, good. All right, so remember where we just started a moment ago. And get your pant leg kind of, you know, about where you want it. Like, really, I don't, I'm kind of not wanting to cover up my little shoes here. Should I maybe roll his pant legs like that? Why don't we do that? Like this is Santa in the off season. He's just slumping around the house, making sure all the elves are working because he's on vacay. So what we can do is kind of start it right about here. I'm gonna let his pant legs be a little bit of high waters because he's just, you know, hanging out, not doing much. And don't worry about where all this comes together because we're gonna use the inside of the leg as the join and the outside's gonna look um, like it's all loose and hanging. So let's just do this together. And I'm going to needle felt this and let y'all ask me a question or share with me a comment. Janlyn says MC1 is the best. Can't be more, more appreciative for your feedback and all of y'all's support. I'm so happy that you like it because I really like it. And let me know any questions or any comments that come up right now. So notice that first I'm just attaching the top. That's where we're going to get our real nice anchor. Now on Wooly Wednesday this last week, we asked what y'all want to do for future felt alongs. Um, and thank you all for that feedback. So um, I will say that we're, we'll definitely, I think, do a cobweb scarf because so many people want to do that. But somebody said a Santa. And if you're wanting to do a particular kind of doll, I would say just keep watching this felt along because I've decided that the little two I'm working on are gonna be a Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And there's so many ways to do a Santa. So let your ideas run wild with that. Um, and I'm gonna build out my two main dolls here as a Mr. and Mrs. Santa. I haven't made a Santa for, a, a full Santa for going on 10 years, just the, the last time I made the last one. Okay. Let me see, I'm, I'm trying to see, oh, I gotta keep up with y'all's with y'all's comments. Let me see what you're saying. Um, yes, roll his pants up, okay, good. Um, <laughs> Roseanne, you're so sweet. Uh, yes, this is MC1 Mahogany. We're out of mahogany right now. Um, uh, when are we getting mahogany back in? I think we're going to get mahogany back in uh, before fall really kicks in. But right now we just have um, our new chimney, which is a really fun color. I do kind of wish I had brought it for this guy. Okay, so now here, remember, here's kind of the fun thing is you can move those legs out of the way. And right in here in the seat or the crotch, you can attach it right to the doll. And if that if that needle feels too delicate, well then get a more you know, aggressive needle when you're right up there in the crotch and just get all of that attached. And in here, you know, you can attach, all right, we're gonna roll this leg up. On the inside of the leg, you can attach part of it to uh, the actual body of the doll and then thread the other one over on top 
I'll get his leg. He's going to do uh, some stretching for us. There we go, Santa. He's got to do his yoga moves. Okay, so what we're going to do here is this one I'm going to attach to the doll leg itself. A O C H. What's A O C H? So this piece is being attached to Santa's leg. Now, I had felt it, this pant leg, quite a bit before we hooked up today. So it is thin, um, but we have an under layer of the same color, so it doesn't really show through. Make it as thick or as thin as you're comfortable. Remember, you don't want it to tear it apart as people admire your doll, which I promise they will. I would if I got to see it. And this part, I'm just gonna get all of that laying down. Now we can go back and let this top part back Santa. Now we're gonna attach this top part to the part we just attached to his leg. Let me see, good, I'm going back this way. Are we doing okay? A-O means it hurts. Oh, ouch, <laughs> ow. Did you poke yourself? <laughs> ouch, who's that? Oh, ouch for Santa? You guys are cracking me up. I don't know what you're saying. Okay, or is it the stretching that's the ouch? <laughs> Y'all can do this. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna attach from here top down first and then we're gonna attach this part just as seamlessly as we can. So now we're kind of attaching just to that under layer and the rest is kind of hanging on his leg and it's gonna look a little bit like pants when we get right down to it. Where these two come together, I do the same thing when I'm doing hats and stuff. We're gonna thread that down once we have them together. So first, we'll go this way. And you know, if you wanna play with that, we could have had this on the outside and put like a big button on the outside as well. That would have been a fun, a fun way to go about it. And notice that the rest of this, I'm not anchoring, you know, I'm not sealing down to his leg, but we can take out some of the air, um, some of the loftiness, and just make it a little more secure, a little less loose. And then right here where the two come together, one can kind of thread down to the other, just like we did at the cheeks. You're just gonna kind of make them blend, and then you can come back up into it and make a little ledge. And these little ledges and these little folded edges are kind of how we do everything on shirts and hats. So we're gonna do it up here on the, the sleeves as well, but we're gonna make suspenders for him just to give you some more ideas and a waistband. I decided that he was sort of wearing, you know, his around the house pants with an undershirt um, and overalls, if you will. And just work these edges until you're happy with them, you know, so that the cuff looks like you want it and lays how you want it. Is this helping? Is this giving you guys some ideas? They are saying you're poking Santa. Oh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> um, okay, so like up here is where I would, you know, spend a little more time. You could add, you know, depending on what he's doing, if he's sitting, you see how fun that is to get creases? So if your Santa's gonna sit, think about not anchoring all that down yet and let the wrinkles be there and you can even, you know, needle felt those wrinkles into place. I think Santa's gonna be sitting. What do you think? Does Santa drink beer, y'all? Does he like sit around and watch, t watch Elf TV? <laughs> What are the needle gauges? Uh, Patricia, um, you might check our site so that you see the color codes, but this is a 42 triangle. This is a real fine needle. So that's what I would say is, you know, think about where you want wrinkles and where you want to bring things to life because this right here, or even in the knee, that's going to add a lot of realism to your doll when you have a little bit of wrinkle and you can needle felt those wrinkles right into place and that's really fun and all the rest of this though I'm gonna kind of tack down so I'm not gonna get rid of my wrinkles because I'm gonna try and figure out what Santa's what Santa's sitting on besides his duff and work on my pants legs 
He's wearing socks. Is he wearing socks? Yes, he's wearing, well, he's wearing black socks here. And I didn't finish over here because we did this together during the broadcast. Um, okay, I'm going to try and come back to Stacy's idea. Oh, he likes, Santa likes hot mold cider. <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, so let's look at, I'm going to look at suspenders and like a little waistband here for him. Look at, he's doing his like exercises. <laughs> okay, Santa, do your hundreds. The guys <laughs> doing his hundreds. Okay, so let me show you uh, a little bit on maybe adding a waistband and some suspenders. The waistband I prepared before y'all came, and the waistband is nothing more than the folded edge that we've done already. A nice folded edge and see how much this tapers. Remember to leave your ends as loose as you can. Uh, as loose as you can so you decide where it goes. And with him, depending on what you want his pants to look like, you could have these, uh, the folded edge, you could either show where it terminates or just have it all look like you know just one big waistband so if you want to show where it terminates that means like you might even have a fly santa's wearing his pants way up high on his belly so i don't think i'm going to show a fly on the trousers but a fly on the trousers uh, a zipper would just be a similar like another folded edge and you could always um put accent either threads or stitches on there. You could do it with another wool color. Um, but I think I'm just gonna have, these are just his pull-up britches. These are his, you know, around the house pants. Um, one of the girls at the shop calls them her non-social pants. <laughs> at my house, we call them couch pants. Couch pants, where you're just hanging out on the couch. So here's what I'm gonna do, just like we did with the pants leg. We're going to give him a bit of a waistband. Now what I didn't tell you was I put uh, just cotton white over the core wool. So he has cotton white on his body here. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but this is core wool and this is cotton white. Sometimes they can be pretty close together and sometimes they're a little further apart. Oh, Madeline says she's learning so much. Uh, over once fold. Yeah, you know what? I did like a half fold. So for the waistband, uh, let me just jump over here real quick. For the waistband, I pretty much just took a took a, a long piece and just folded it over once, and then just made a great big, a great big band, and then all of this, you know, taper down part is getting blended into his belly. Yep. So it's just one big fold over. And it doesn't have to be too thick because you already have so much pants on his body, but it just depends on where you are, uh, you know, where you are at that phase. So this is where, you know, one of those places that Jennifer's tool comes into place. You have to be careful because it really does shape as well. I mean, I have shaped bodies with this thing once I got them semi-felted. So it really does crunch the wool, even though these needles are so fine but it can help you get a little quick compression. And also the clover tool, which I don't use a lot, but I would kind of use it on something like this because it really helps just kind of smooth everything down. So get your waistband where you want it. And if you have too much fiber, you can, uh, you know, you can peel it off. But this is kind of a quick tack down tool. And it's also kind of good for just smoothing out a ball, a sphere, uh, you know, a 3D piece or a 2D piece like this. And again, where we join together, like I don't need all of this. So just use your finger to hold the fiber in place and tear the balance off. If it's too needle felted, you can cut it. Um, you can cut it, but then you have to deal with that cut end and try and feather it out. I'm looking for questions. How would you do a dress? We're gonna look at um, that here in just a moment. I'm not gonna make a whole dress. I do prefer to wet felt a dress for a lot of reasons, but I'm gonna give you ideas for doing a coat or a dress uh, with the MC1 right after we finish uh, his suspenders here. Okay. 
thank you for being here everybody and just helping to make this so fun I really am having a lot more fun than doing these videos all by myself. It's a lot more fun to see your comments and questions and ideas pop up and to see your dolls coming to life as uh, you know we work on them together. I have to want you to know like it's just really special for me to see what you all are up to and where you're going with, with your own ideas. Okay, so here's Santa's uh, big britches and of course you would spend your time getting everything laying down nice uh, and felted. Um, you know, you might give him a wrinkle if he's like, you know, seriously in the off time and we have these wrinkles here, you might give him a little bit of wrinkle here as well. Just think about, you know, what you want to achieve in the characteristics of those clothes. But you can see here when he's sitting that we've got a real nice shelf. You might add a drawstring here if you want it to look like he just has his big pajama pants on. Um, so play with that idea. Uh, just play with that idea. What do you use for his chair? Um, Lois, I don't know. Anything you like. You know, sometimes I like to, uh, you know, use a box, like use a little holiday box and, uh, and paint that. Um, someone says, can you wet felt right on the MC1? MC1 wet felts. So yes, you can wet felt with it. Play with it. What other questions? No, Kate, I do not think he has. Oh, are they felted? Maybe felted ones. No, I think the reindeer are probably around enough. He doesn't need any extra heads. Okay, so we have Santa's little pants on, and I just want to show you an idea to think about, uh, like with the suspenders. What I did here, these are actually uh, long strips that I cut. I physically cut with these scissors, just these long strips. But I don't want a bunch of cut edges out. And I don't want to like try and fold it and make a perfect, um, a perfect long strip or anything. So instead, I just took the cut edges and I'm going to roll them a little bit on my phone, foam and kind of round those out. And I'll show you what we'll do. <laughs> Greta says her cat just flopped into the middle of her <laughs> work area. Cats are so bossy, aren't they? <laughs> they don't like you giving anything else more attention than them. If you're doing nothing, I think they, they'll ignore you or just get you to pet them. But Okay, so I made these kind of rounded, and that way they're a little more uniform in shape. And if you want them to stick up off of his body, well, then you might wet felt them first. But if you're willing for them to lay on his body, then uh, you can just have them loosely needle felted like this. And definitely think about, you know, adding some buttons here or some cute little effect. But I'm just going to needle felt it right into his pants. And remember, you don't really want to see it so much. I mean, you don't want to see all those threads go down. So use a fine needle and vary the angles so you don't stretch it down. Um, but then, if you start needle felting kind of up the, the middle, then you can come back and shape the edges where you want them so that they're more the um, width that you want them to be. And you can give the edges, here's a little piece of vegetable matter you can give the edges uh, a little more dimension. So if you needle felt up the middle, don't go too far, then you could come back and sculpt these in and make them look a little more defined like you might expect it. suspenders. And you know what? You might like your suspenders to be brown leather or some different color. I don't know, this is just what I was working with, so I might change his too. I just wanted to give you an idea of how you might make a long strip and make it look uh, even rectangular or flat without having to shape it to be flat at first. Okay, so I'm gonna come around the back here and what I'm gonna do, Santa's gotta straighten his legs now, is I'm gonna join them in the middle. I'm gonna have them kind of come, sorry, I can't see. I'm gonna have them kind of come to the middle here and then come back to his pants. So I'm just going to tack this one down for the moment, and then we'll do the same. Is this giving you all some different ideas for what you want to do with your doll? I'd love to see maybe, um, while I'm just tacking these down real fast, 
what are some of the themes of the dolls you're working on? Like tell us, you know, tell us what's the idea or the concept behind your doll that you're working on or planning. I'm watching. Lois asked if I were adding a button, would I glue it on? You know what, Lois, I use very little glue in my work. Um, the power paw was kind of a stretch, you know, for me to work with a power paw. But what I would probably do, I would really consider making a, a thread from a staple length of wool and needle felting it in, or even actually sewing it on to the doll, which would be pretty easy to do. And then that would give a lot of realism if you sewed on even a little miniature button. And I know a lot of this looks like draft mode, so I just wanna, you know, without spending all of your time, um, you know, smoothing all these up, just know that I would go around and make these completely uniform. And then I would probably join them right here in the back just for fun. Let them just overlap. But yeah, they could cross or they don't have to. You could cross them, that would be cute. We'll cross them. Okay, so I wanna see what some of y'all are doing. My first lady is wearing nothing but skin. She'll play a recorder. I'm doing a chubby halfling old guy and an elf girl wearing tights rounded up to the shoes. That sounds fun. Um, <laughs> Sharon, no Sharon, you don't have to have a concept. I didn't either. Uh, it just kind of, when I saw these two, when y'all, I was with y'all felting last time, I thought they looked like a couple. And then I just felt like they were Mr. and Mrs. Claus. So. Sometimes I have an idea before I get started, but I was just wondering if y'all know. Some people know what they're making. A satire, oh, that sounds amazing. Um, not sure, that's perfect. An old lady, that's fun. Yeah, I just thought maybe some of you might know, some of you might not know. Okay, so this is just kind of an idea. There we go, so we have some suspenders, we have a waistband, um, finish these up and like I could always change these to something else you know a different color and maybe I will maybe next time I'll give them a different a different color of suspenders but you see how to get a waistband you see how to get some fun wrinkles in your clothes how to fold up a cuff and how even to make a leg look a little less like a, a pair of pants look a little less like leggings and more like pants Mm, fun, Justine. That sounds neat. She says she wants, Justine says um, her doll will be like a woodsy with a tunic, leggings, and boots. That's so fun. Yeah, I love forest folks too. That's one of my favorite things to do. So when it comes to sleeves and things like that, um, let's see, we have about half an hour left. Um, it's going to be very much kind of like we did with the pants legs or at least similar. And what I wanna show you is that once you get fiber on a sleeve, like this one already has the cotton white, and I've not uh, nerded out and gotten it anchored down to the nth degree, as you can tell, because it's getting roughed up. When you spend the time to needle felt MC1 down, it'll hold up pretty well to handling. But to make a bell sleeve, you can kind of do what we did on the pant leg, or, or any kind of sleeve that looks like it's sort of on the doll, like, um, like either this one or like the bottom. Who else do I have? I have somebody around here. You can um, make a little end just like we did for the pant leg, so. Wherever you want your sleeve to terminate, you're gonna kind of create this folded edge, just like this. Just create the folded edge and needle felt it before you put it on the doll. You can use your skewer if you want. If you're using the full thickness of the bat, one fold is, you know, is really enough. And it just depends on whether you want the sleeves to look just kind of rounded, like a real cuff, um, flat, whatever you want. This is how I'm gonna do it, how I would do it is with a fold.
Roseanne says now she wants to do a Santa too. Santa's fun. I don't know why. I love wood, woodsy beings. Elf, elves, fairies, and woodsy beings. And Santa is just so easy to do. <laughs> he really is. He just kind of calls to you. So when you're joining something here, like let's say Santa has his sleeves rolled up, it could just be like right there and you join the fiber right here, just like we did on the pants legs. If you want the sleeve to be longer, like way down here, then you can wrap this fiber further down the arm first and you can literally join just what would be the end of the cuff, like there. I tend to put these on last rather than on first because I think it hides, you know, what are like wraps around the arm. So I know someone wants to look at dresses and I have something kind of queued up for us and somebody else wants to look at toes. Um, before I, I jump to those, is this enough direction uh, uh, as far as, you know, basically needle felting shirts, uh, shirts and pants and shoes for your dolls? Do y'all feel like this is enough for you to go forward? Yes, okay, good, y'all Y'all are feeling good. Okay, so I don't wanna spend a bunch of time doing things that feel el you know, elementary and like you could figure out based on what we've, we've done together so far. Um, I just wanted to show you what we've done so far as we've attached the hand today. Um, we did the shoes, looked at pants. So this is, this is basically how I would do it, just like that. I, of course, would finish what's under there a little bit and then I would just piece this on and I think that's what I'll do next time. I'll piece that on. You can also cut this if you've gone too far. You can cut it and then just flare that out a little bit and just let that be the part that you hide underneath or use it as a fold over if you want it to look like a cuff, a cuffed sleeve. And that's what I would do. Finish working on this a little bit. And even once you have it on your doll, once you have it needle felt in place, you can come around and just work that edge and make it look like it's very independent of your doll. Okay, good, y'all feel good about that. Okay, so let's jump to something that's a little um, bit bigger, uh, you know, like a, a dress or a coat. And let's talk about how you might approach that. Now I said when we got started that I prefer, um, I prefer to wet felt those. But if that's intimidating for you, I'm gonna encourage you first to start with some fabric or felt models so you kind of get the idea of your shape or how much material you need. You can, uh, you know, if you wanna work with pre-felts, the only thing I want you to think about is how thin it is because pre-felts will just tear apart in your hands. This piece here is our new evergreen. Um, it's just like a single layer, it's paper thin, but it has been needle felted with the punch tool over and over and over, peeled off, needle the other side, peel off, needle the other side. Remember when you're making these that you don't want to attach it to the foam. You want to peel it off regularly and you start using the foam just as a bouncing off point. But if you play with um, squares like this, you can think about how long do I need something to be, whether it's for a dress or a jacket. Let me look for my lady. She's around here somewhere. Mm. I have another body hanging around. Oh, hold on. I have the I have the body with the backwards arm. <laughs> this was my lady. Um, so you can play with something and see, you know, just start to get an idea. How long do I want the dress to be? Or how long do I, I want a skirt to be? How much material do I need to go all the way around? Um, and once you get that basic idea, you can make something like this. This piece was made and then cut. I cut it with scissors. You can cut the MC1, but I cut it, uh, I didn't cut it to leave it permanently cut. I cut it with the idea that I would probably end up needle felting the hem. Um, because if it gets handled, it will come apart. But if you cut the edge first, you may find that you like, it just gives you a little bit of a cleaner 
uh, edge when you fold it over and not so bulky. So that's just something to think about. Um, I'm missing some of your I'm missing some of your comments. Can put a baggie over something. I don't know what that is. Okay, but so you can start to make these shapes and then think about how it fits your doll. And that's what this shape, this little shape does. This is our neck hole and under the arm holes. So when you think about a dress, uh, you can think about, you know, maybe piecing it on. If you want to get rid of bulk, then you can cut out these little areas underneath the arm. If you don't want it to have a front, a fold here, you can even think about it a little more this way. And this is just like a vest or a top, but you can attach it a lot like we kind of did the pants. Or you can just make something big, like this was intended to be, it could be a skirt or a jacket. You can make it a little more ruffly, so it kind of gets, you know, folds in it. And where these two parts come together, right here, I'd probably do it on a leg, make the two edges come together. That could be in, sort of in, make this the cut edge in and the, tapered edge out, but it could kind of be inside of what's a ruffle, if you will, like if you're kind of gathering it. So you can piece this on your doll and needle felt it right here. Y'all have a lot of questions going on, um, a lot of comments going on, and I think I should probably pause, uh, pause and read what y'all are saying. So I'm going to just show this real quick because I think, was it Kate that asked? Um, this is what you might do if you're making a dress or a skirt. If you're making a dress, you would just make it taller. So gather your, gather your excess so that you're making sort of ruffles and such and needle felt it on your doll up here. And for a doll, you could, like we did with the suspenders, you could make sort of a bib top and, you know, this come over. You could do the sleeves just like we were doing the pants legs and the other sleeve. Yeah, this, this would be like a little pleated skirt. This is an example of one. When something is this big and loose, you really want to felt it a lot. Um, needle felt flipping it back and forth back and forth because it's big and loose if it's needle felted it's going to want to come apart it's going to have a lot more integrity if it's wet felted even if it's loosely wet felted uh, Roseanne says only at the waist it really depends on how you're putting it on so in this case I was just designing this to be a skirt or like a waistcoat <laughs> Here's Rodney says hi. <laughs> this is the man who makes my life rich right here. Say hi, Rodney Jean. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, so this I intentionally made like originally like a skirt. <laughs> I made like a skirt instead of a full dress. And my lady doesn't even have breasts yet. So that's why it's not ready to put on to put on to her um, but I just wanted to give you an idea and no I would needle felt it all around the breast but I would make the breasts probably out of the same color even so you have it in there um, let's see I was going to show you something oh like on this guy this could end up I'm not going to cover him up because I do want suspenders to show but on this guy this could start to be the makings of a coat or a vest or a sweater knowing that like this might be the cut front and then I would have to cut this other side to be the front also. So you'd find your place and then you would cut it. I would needle felt it to the body here, under the arms, here, tearing away all that you don't need and then add a collar on like someone suggested. Um, <laughs> people are saying hi to Rodney. Um, then I would add those like you suggested so for the collar I would do the collar a lot like we did you know with our fold our folded edges only longer more like you did for the waistband and just decide what you want that collar to look like but you can see that a long piece like this that's folded would make a really great collar wrapped around something so you can add it on first or last when you're piecing this on 
I don't understand Roseanne's question. Uh, Roseanne says, oh, so you can tear it and attach. I don't know what, what Roseanne is asking. I don't know, and maybe Roseanne, you weren't here from the beginning. Not sure, but l let me know what that question is. So I think it was Kate who asked about doing a dress. And again, my favorite way to do a dress, and I'm going to show you just a couple of the other dollies that I have where the dresses the dresses are fully attached to their body. But when you've got legs and such, such it's not quite as easy to do. So you might think of um, needle felting it really, really well. well let me grab uh, you know a few of these dolls. Like here's one we started with. Um, and this is just completely needle felted to her form. And then the apron is made with the folded edges. These things are made kind of like Santa suspenders that you saw. And just, it looks like it's all, you know, was one piece, but it wasn't. This, I did use this like Santa's waistband. So I put her apron on, and then this is like Santa's waistband coming all the way around. Okay, I see Roseanne's questions coming online now. So Roseanne, this is MC1 that has been needle felted into this shape and these at this edge, this edge and this edge is cut. So it is technically a pre-felt that I made from MC1. It's not a commercial pre-felt like we sell in the shop. Okay, and then um, also, this is another, just an example of a little dress, you know, putting little breasts on, starting to shape the wool around uh, those necklines, and you could add a bunch of detail. But when you're needle felting clothing, it is a little bit um, more of a challenge uh, to do a whole dress and put it on and have it not be too delicate. So you want to make sure and needle felt it to your body. Um, Yes, the pre-felt the, the pre that we do sell though is easily torn and that's, you all, you all might remember we started out, we started out talking about that and I'm just responding to questions y'all are talking about the pre-felt. This is the pre-felt we currently carry and this is what happens to it over time is it just wants to come apart if it's handled. It's not felted. Remember that pre-felt is not felted. So if you're going to felt material to piece onto your doll for a dress, you know, whether you're going to go, you know, something like this shape or something like this shape. This is how I would use this piece under here for something like this shape. And maybe your arms don't come down so far. So maybe we take this piece. I think for Santa, I need it to be a little bit bigger. So just to, just to put it, I just made this piece to show y'all. So I'll go ahead and, um, piece it out so you can see what I mean. So let's just, at the risk of making it too small, I'm just going to cut it and we'll just do this together. You don't have to cut it. You can tear it. You can fold it. I'm going to cut it for ease. And then I'm going to sort of peel this neck out a little bit. And then I'm not going to make these arms go so deep. I'm just going to pluck it out a little bit because we don't need all that excess. Y'all can look at, you know, doll clothing patterns. You can just make your, you know, make your own up as you go along. I don't have a, you know, a bunch of patterns to share. I just kind of find my way as I go. Um, yeah, Roseanne says she missed the beginning. That's what I thought. You might, you know, if you want your sweater to be folded back, you might do that, uh, do something like this. You might do this edge treatment before you put it on your doll. You might tack it down before you put it on. You might have wanted like a double fold. Maybe you want it to look a little like a, a house coat, uh, you know, like a great big sweater. If you want to put pockets on this sweater, um, maybe Santa has big pockets and he carries um, reindeer munch around in it for all his favorite friends. You might put those pockets on. Here, this is too thick, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to take this end off. You might put pockets on before you put it on the doll. And that way, I don't even know if this is going to be in the right place, but let's do that. Put pockets on before you put it on the doll, and that way um, you don't have to fight that afterwards. I didn't even fold these edges under. You know, you could have fun with this and go back and put... Um, 
red thread, you know, stitch red thread around the edges or little, you know, red fibers. I have no idea if this is going to be in the right place, but I would put reindeer munch in his pocket. His, po his pocket looks a little full, so you have a little a little room in there to play if you don't anchor the whole thing down, and you could have something sticking out. I'll peel that off, and then why don't we just fold this edge back to match? Well, let's try it on him before I go too far and see how it fits on him. So, here's Santa. This will not be his permanent jacket. Let me just say for the record, probably not. Maybe it will. Maybe his wife will wear it. So look how cute that kind of looks. You've got the front folded back and whoever asked, this is how I would do a dress as well, you know, with this sort of same idea. And we piece it up around the shoulders and this is where I would needle felt it under here. I would only needle felt it like here and up the top of the shoulders and right here at the top of the back and let all of the rest of this hang off and then you can add the sleeves on as far as you want them uh, to come down. Maybe he has cap sleeves, maybe it's a vest. I mean, you know, maybe he has little short sleeves, maybe he has long sleeves, maybe it's a vest. But I would do the same thing with a dress. And if you want a dress that, you know, doesn't have a front join, then let it happen on the side. You know, it's just, or you have to make a great big piece of fabric to put over your doll, like the circle. Uh, let me pull out the circle. So is this helpful? Y'all see how to kind of, um, <laughs> y'all see kind of how you might, how you might approach this to make, you know, clothing look a little more fitted, even just making your own pre-felts rather than buying pre-made pre-felts. You can have them any color that you want. <laughs> make a tiny candy cane. That's a great idea, Stacy. Man, maybe he needs a sweater. All right, I'm going to work on that idea. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring this back in for whoever asked about the dress. Um, you know, needle felting a great big circle might seem like a pain, but you could do it. Let me grab my ruler and I'll tell you how big this is so that you might, you know, cut one and play with your own doll. Okay, this is just about a nine and a half inch circle. I'm gonna put it on this little doll here. And you can see on this little girl who really needs to get finished. She's getting brutalized. <laughs> She's a couple of years old now, my headless doll, uh, who this head goes to. So maybe with to playing with you all is when I should actually finish her. Um, but when you have a little circle like this, this could also uh, be like a dress template if you wanted. And then you could just figure out how to, uh, oh, this is going to be too short. But it's the same idea, like for a skirt or a dress, you could just make a great big circle and let it come all the way down. So in this case, this is just a circle. Just a circle, like a little circle for a skirt. Uh, for her to wear and so you could do the same thing with the dress is just make like a great big a great big circle or you could have a skirt and a top um, to make a dress Kat, Roseanne says she makes Barbie clothes uh, tiny buttons oh that's what <laughs> I don't own any tiny buttons maybe I should find some find some miniature buttons um, I feel like I was going to answer one more thing. You know what I was going to answer is how to attach the head. So I know some people ask me that and some people are going to stop right here at the needle felting a doll portion. So when you're ready to attach your head and Santa, well Santa is going to get needle felted clothes, but I am going to work on him more. Since we have him on the table, let's go ahead. Let's see if I can find his head. And then um, I'll put him on so you can see how you might approach this. Here he is. Santa is not finished at all. He still has one ear from the last time we were together. Um, and he needs lots of work on his bumpy old face and uh, he has no beard or anything. But when you're ready to attach the head, um, what you want to do is take these wires that we sort of wrapped up and bound up 
And you're gonna just put this right in here, just like this. Head, 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 yes, okay. Yeah, I know some of y'all, y'all are ready. Now, what we're gonna do then is I like to pinch this down. I'm gonna end up undoing mine, but pinch the neck wire down so that it's a little more narrow. I would rather have wool than wire when it comes to bulk. Much rather have wool than wire. So you're gonna put that on and then just you're just gonna wrap these around and make sure that you wrap them around in opposite directions. So get one out of the way and then you're gonna wrap one this way and one the other way. It's so easy. Now you don't have to use all this wire, just get a real nice join so that the head is nice and firm. So that one went this way, this one's gonna go that way. Make them go opposite directions, otherwise your head kind of wants to spin. If your neck's too long, you can cut that. If you made your neck loop too tall, if you can't shove it up into the base of the doll head, and you could, you could cut a hole and kind of coax it up the back. If you don't want to do that, then you can cut that loop and wrench it down with your needle nose pliers and make it shorter. So this one, I'm just going the opposite way. Make it real nice and tight, real nice and tight, real nice and tight. And then get the head kind of in the position that you want it to be. Pose it. Once these wires are all down, and then you're gonna wrench them down with your needle nose pliers. That's all you have to do. When you do this part with your needle nose pliers, the head's really gonna be poseable. So get it where you want it, sort of pose the head how you want it, and then you're going to wrap the wool just like we did here on the hand. I encouraged everyone to save uh, fiber at the base of the head, and I hope you did. It makes joining a lot easier um, because you'll fluff it out just like we did at the hand and then wrap the wool around the neck. I'm not ready to attach my head on this guy, but is that enough direction? I know, you guys see it does. I know it's, pre it's pretty easy. So cut these wires off and just remember all the threading stuff that I've showed you um, maybe I should just, when I get to that point, maybe I'll do another just little standalone video. But I think y'all understand. Um, let me see, where I have another head around here somewhere. Ideally, your head looks a little more like this. If your head looks a little more like this, then you have fluff that you can peel back. And then when you attach it to the body and you start to cover this neck wire, then this stuff is just gonna come over the top, peel off any extra that you don't need, and just taper it all down so that you get a real nice join. Oh, I'm seeing some hearts and stuff. Okay, good, I'm glad that's helpful. Yeah, that's what I say is, um, it, you know, it's something I, I don't learn until I do something three to five times, and then I go, oh, I can just save fiber on, and it's a lot better when you do that. Elsa, feet at the start. I don't know what. Um, okay, great. We did shoes waiting for toes. Karen, you got it. Let's go. Let's go to toes. Let's talk about a foot and toes. Okay. So in comes um, Alda with great big toes. Let me. I'm gonna see hearts when you can see. When you can see her feet, <laughs> give me some hearts. Now her toes are a bit brutalized because they do not have Paverpol on them. And she has also been in and out of a, you know, of a million boxes. Um, but toes, quite interestingly, are a lot like her nose. And if you all <laughs> were with me last time, we learned how to make uh, pointy noses and Alda's nose is very much like a pointy nose, but with a great big toe on it, <laughs> if you will. And so here's a couple of ways. I'm gonna show you how to, why don't we give her like an extra toe or something <laughs> over here? I don't have anybody ready and queued up for a toe. So you have to have a, you know, a foot or whatever to put it on. And here's a different color, so it'll kind of stand out. Here's one way you might make a toe. So the first thing you might do is figure out how big is that, that toe gonna be and just start by making a ball. So if you felt it with me at all, you've probably um, made a number of balls or beads or whatever. So start with a little roll 
and then tuck it in uh, tuck it in and make kind of a little ball but in this case you can make it uh, you know a little more oblong this is one idea there's a couple of ways to do them but this is kind of one idea you can make it a little more oblong should I make it how big should I make it it's a little toe so let's stop it here get a little more oblong this is if you don't want to use a skewer this is how you might do it and yeah you might be making much smaller toes but I'll just demonstrate big in fact I'll show you if it's a little little toe I'll show you how you might do it now one way you might do is kind of how we made our fingers if you really want to position them so you might build a foot on wire and put your toes on first and kind of build them like we did our fingers that's definitely an idea but her nose and her toes are no more complex than this so we started with a ball and then we ended up kind of making just a big I don't know what do you call it it's like a half jelly bean she's a troll no she's just a little elemental being she's actually like the village fiber artist she, instead of so all the sheep come to her for like to get their locks dyed and she tests out all of the hair colors on her own hair so this is her natural hair color but before she dyes any of the the village sheep she dyes her own hair to see if that if that's the color they want <laughs> she does lots of fun stuff okay so I'm going to just needle felt this, the whole top part, and then leave this bottom part loose like you might expect, and then fluff that out. And then this is what's going to get attached. So I would keep needle felting this till it's a little more firm like you want it. Aggie, thank you. Yeah, kind of like a dome, right? Because it, it's like a cylinder, but this part is rounded, and this part you leave open, and then this is the part that you're going to attach to her foot or her whatever, like wherever it's gonna go. So when it comes to attaching it onto her foot, I'm gonna just wait until my camera catches up so I can see if this shows up. I plucked out one of her hairs. Let me see, okay. So I know that doesn't show up perfectly for you, how you might wanna see, but then we're just gonna thread it on kind of just like we've done everything else. I probably should have made it a blue toe so you could really see. The first thing I do is anchor in, anchor on like what's that perimeter, if you will, that perimeter fiber. This is not going to be a permanent toe. Oh, by the way, <laughs> just doing this for you, whoever asks. I don't remember. A couple of people wanted to see toes. <laughs> Let me switch back here. Okay, so attach around all that perimeter, and then whenever you have something like this, you want to needle felt all the way through the item, uh, you know, to really get it to anchor down. Really, really get it to anchor down. Uh, just thread, and you, you know, potentially plan to lose some of the height. You can even squish it down with your finger and really get it to anchor on there, because you don't want anyone to be able to pull it off. And if you're going to a uh, do claw, <laughs> Roseanne says a basic rule is to always leave a little fuzz on your shapes. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just use mine. Oh, this has traveled a lot. They have though. I travel my dolls a bit. So that's all I do. Now, if you're doing a little tiny, there's her, yeah, there's her do claw. <laughs> if you're doing a little tiny, a little tiny figure, you might even make sort of a little paw of toes first, meaning rather than make a bunch of individual toes, you might decide, you know, to, to build out something I don't know more like a mitt you could even cut them into toes it's kind of how I first learned to do hands was to make like a mitt and it does look kind of like a mitt <laughs> but you could do something it's just an idea like maybe all the toes don't need to be separated so double fold maybe a little bit bigger than that so a little bit longer so you have enough room for the toes Ow. I'm just going to make an imaginary little span of toes that you might put on a foot. This is just an idea. Kind of shape it, tear this off, but kind of shape it like we did the other things, meaning you're going to go in the sides. Remember to get your, your bulk, start coaxing your bulk in. 
Maybe you wanted like show a sandaled foot or something and you don't need too many individual toes. That's kind of the idea I'm playing with now. Someone says, Patricia says that the toe looks funny. Yes, it's not her toe, Patricia, that's why. <laughs> it's not really her toe. She adopted a toe for the sake of this demonstration. Okay, so you're kind of just making like the little end of a foot. Maybe this would go, I don't know, this probably won't even fit this little girl. Maybe you're making something that would go, this would be the big toe, might go here. That would kind of go on the end of a foot if you want to do it for sandals. So start to shape it to kind of about the size you need it. And if you get this all nice and dense, you could even go back and just cut a couple of spaces I'm going to show you. This is how I learned to make hands when I very, very first started. I said I was going to bring somebody into this. Uh, oh, I was going to pull out a leg. I'll see if I can find my leg. I promised someone that I would try and show my leg. Okay. So if you just want to make a couple of toes, what you could do is like snip out a big toe right here. A little bit. And you might even just add a little dip in here for a couple of toes. So once you have that, you can kind of start to shape that a little more like a big toe, just like that. And you might put that over the top of a foot that you already have, needle felt it onto a foot, work it into the wire. Wendy says she sees. Okay, so then these, you could kind of just suggest toes. Suggest, draw a deep line, add a toenail if you want. That little cut can kind of help you know, if you want one to stick out by itself. If it's kind of a mess, you might wrap some fiber around it, meaning like if you need some roving. And this is kind of a big foot, but the pinky toe is often hiding. You can barely see it at all anyway. So that's kind of a suggestion of toes that you might do if you're working on the foot of a doll, especially, you know, if you want it to show in sandals or something. It might not stand alone as a foot, but if you're working on a sandal shoe like we were earlier, that might work. And then you can work that into your doll. Is that helpful? What's NP? What's NP? No problem, probably. Um, I'm not the best on short term. <laughs> so Wendy says, could you do the could you do the toes the same way you do a hand? Yes, you absolutely could if you need all those toes showing. But if you just need the suggestion of a toe, you might do this, which is to make a couple of folds, give yourself some girth so that when you, you know, start to needle felt toes, you have the wool, you have some dimension left in the wool. And that is one way that you might approach it. Great. Yes, yes. Good idea for flip flops. Will the cut edge not fray? You know what, Roseanne? I'm needle felting it down. If you feel like the toe is too long and it might fray, you could go back and wrap wool around. But usually what happens is it starts to stretch across the digit and you see a line. So if you're trying to get rid of fraying rather than wrap around, think about just making a cap, a cap over the end like this, you know, so that you can kind of uh, then needle felt over the top of it. This one I wouldn't worry about. It's so little I would just keep needle felting it. But if you're worrying about, I didn't cut the fronts notice, I only cut inside where I could needle felt them down. But if you're worried about that, then just put a cap, a loose web over it rather than wrap wool around it because that just always shows. It always stretches and it always shows. Okay, I think that we are about at time. Oh, so someone says, can you show how to do nails? You know, nails are kind of fussy. Um, I've done them a few ways. I've done them, I've done them with pre felts and I've done them with wool. And um, you'll see that, you know, Alda only got one. I lost my interest. <laughs> and she has great big feet. Um, but I would do it just the same way we've been doing. I'll show you, um, one of my dolls has a bunch of nails. 
on his fingers. I'll show you his fingers too, that stash. It's really a tedious thing. So when it's little, when it's on hers, it's easy. It's just like we've been doing. So all you gotta do is create a folded edge for a nail. Just create a folded edge. I don't know why I gave up on hers. I just didn't wanna do it anymore. <laughs> I just said enough. I'll just needle felt it a little bit. Just like this. Just don't make it, you know, don't make it too wide and don't make it too long. And then just put it like right where you want it. Decide how it is. And so what I would do is I would take all this down. You can cut, you can like say cut the edges. And tear off this back part. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll show you, um, I'll show you Stash's, Stash's fingernails. They're pretty tedious. So this is what I would do. Get your finger out from underneath <laughs> because you'll poke your finger. And just get it as wide as you want it. And mine are still too big. You're gonna have to nurse it, you know, go around, get it exactly where you need it. And um, needle felt it just in the shape that you want it. So like I said, mine's still a little too, a little too big. Do you use a different color for the nail? This is white. Yeah, this is just white, cotton white. I know, I wouldn't go too white, you know, like the CX2 is a little too white and a little too hairy as well. It's a real, it's a real wiry fiber. So I would just, you know, not make these edges down here too long because they really show, but that's all you got to do. And then just go around and flatten it. Well, I really bent my needle now. What was I doing? I must have leaned over it. That's all you got to do. Just needle felt it down. So let me show you some on a little doll so it makes a little more sense, but that's all I do. And this one I tried to trim uh, with the little brown and honestly, I didn't really like it. So I just quit, <laughs> which I'm kind of notorious for doing. If I don't like where something's going, sometimes I just quit. So I'm gonna grab uh, the fingernails for y'all to see. This is Stash, and I'll hold him up in the camera. His hands his hands are the ones that have gotten the most brutalized um, by the little kids, and why I went to really stiff wires, um, and really um, stiff wires, and using the power pole, because the kids just bend his fingers all over the place. And all I did was put those little white squares right on, and it's tedious, trust me, it's a really tedious thing to do. And all of these little knuckle joints, I mean, his hands are all but destroyed, but all of these little knuckle joints and stuff are all done by, you know, adding a little ball of wool and just painstakingly, you know, needle felting it into place. So, so I can't believe our time's up already. It's been two hours. <laughs> fun hours felting with you all. I want to see if you have any uh, final questions or final comments. Thank you all for hanging in with me for a couple of hours. And um, yeah, it's so fun. It's so fun for me to see all of your do dolls progressing. And I hope today was helpful. Thank you, Roseanne, for that uh, very much. And I just appreciate all of your questions and all of your comments and all of your inspiration. You inspire me so much. And seeing all of your dolls come to life is fabulous. And just appreciate you being here. So if I haven't answered your question today, please do tag me. You're welcome to post it. Usually I see it a little bit easier in the group, uh, which is Living Felt Friends. And you're welcome to tag me. If you have a question for me, you're welcome to private message me if you have a question for me. And I look forward to seeing your dolls come to life over the next week. Next time we are going to be wet felting some clothes. So you might decide to wet felt a portion and needle felt a portion 